Hello, I'm Apostle Robert Bryan, the pastor of Place of Healing Church, located at 1590 Sunbury Road in Columbus, Ohio. I would like to talk to you for a few minutes about what the Bible has to say about the word perseverance. So let's pray and get started. Spirit of the living God, Lord, we thank you right now for your grace and your mercy. And we pray, Heavenly Father, Lord God, that the words of my mouth represent the meditations of thine heart. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Perseverance. Specifically, it is just maintaining Christian faith through the trying times of our lives. And the idea of perseverance, it was an inherent thought. It is an inherent thought throughout the New Testament. Most notably in uh, the themes of assurance and warning. The background for the setting of this ideal of perseverance blossomed out of the context of persecution and temptation. The believer is expected to faithfully endure and to remain uh, um, steadfast in the face of opposition, attack, and discouragement. New Testament writers were very serious about this. They were forthright in advising believers to, to be consistent in prayer. They employed athletic uh, imagery to remind the Christians to be effectual in their work as they trained in the ways of God. Israel's failure of faithfulness, faithful, oh, excuse me, Lord, faithfulness in the Exodus has also been a disturbing picture for Christians of the day. It, because it is a warning of today that is talked about in 1 Corinthians 10, verses 1 through 14, and Hebrews 3, 7 through 19. And what they're basically trying to get us as Christians to understand is Christian living and true Christian belief are both necessary and necessary parts of Christian, but being a Christian in Christian life. Okay, and perseverance, it is a key component because the warnings are stern in Hebrew. Chapter one specifically brings into focus of who Jesus is and what he is to mean to us as believers. The Bible pretty much only talks about one thing once we get out of the historical view and acts and, and the life of Jesus. It talks about how to live correctly, how to do this right, what to avoid, what to concentrate on. And, 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 and this is what we find being said in Hebrews chapter two. Listen to what Hebrews chapter two, one and says. It says, therefore, we ought to give the more earnest heed to things that we have heard, lest at any time we should let them slip. Basically, what it was talking about <clears throat> is what was said in chapter one, which really laid out who Jesus was and what he means to us. It, uh, but it also, we also have to be aware of the fact that renouncers have always existed in the body of Christ for, from day one. I mean, uh, or, or better yet, sometimes what we look at as being renouncers is uh, people who have stated other religious doctrines, doctrines or beliefs. Uh, and this has been a problem from day one, from day one. I mean, the, the Catholic Church was built out of uh, disagreeing with what the apostles said and what had been going on. But is that the human side of the salvation of uh, salvation equation is this. It deals with faithfulness to, of Christians in matters of God's will. It means hearing the voice of the Lord through the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. It, it is one of the great theological ideals of this era, and it has to be reaffirmed. And these are the tenets of it. How, how, you know, it, it, is, it is hearing the voice of the Lord. It is understanding that as humans, uh, the, si the salvation equation, it, it deals with us as being faithful. But how do we do it? That's a critical piece. We do it by prayer, prayer. And we have to take prayer seriously. We have to be potent when it comes to prayer. We have to always be speaking, praying. The Bible teaches us to pray without ceasing and that men ought to always pray. And what that should specifically mean, and I talked about this on, on, this on Wednesday night, but what that should specifically, specifically mean to us as Christians Boy, the devils really don't want y'all to hear this because he is, I'm never this bad with my addiction. But anyway, what that means should mean to you is this. You and I have to pray with a heart of prayer. 
Uh, it should give us, uh, lead us into forgiveness of people that we understand uh, give us problems because human nature is weak. It should take us to a place of love in the Lord because love says that we will obey his commandments and obeying his commandments means obeying the voice of the Holy Spirit in us. That is the key component to being able to, to persevere in these trying times because there are things that are going on in the world today that make absolutely no sense. I mean, in, in, in Atlanta, and this is my last thing I want to share with you, how we have to persevere through some things because in Atlanta, those eight people were killed. And then we had the, the incident that happened in Orange County this week. Since Atlanta to Orange County, Orange County represented the 20th mass shooting or murder. Now, that, that ought to tell you something that's not right what's going on in this world today, okay? And that's just what's going on that we see. I'm not talking about what's going on with us personally. Personally, we have challenges that approach us every day, and God never ch told you that there would be no challenges in living this life. But he did tell you he would stay with you, and if you will pray, he will be with you, and he will help you. The Holy Spirit will help you to persevere. Give God some praise. And I, I hope you have a wonderful time at church tomorrow. It's Resurrection Sunday. If you don't have a church home, uh, we will have church live at our location, which is 1590 uh, Sunbury Road, the Valleydale Ballroom in Columbus, Ohio. We start service at 11. Tomorrow is Communion Sunday, so be prepared for that. I talked about it on Wednesday. Uh, if you want, if you're not going to come, you can still come back to this very same place on Facebook and watch. And if you want to take, join us in taking communion, go buy you some non-salted saltine crack crackers, uh, and buy you, uh, some, some grape juice. And that's how you can take communion with us. So give God some praise. It's been a blast being with you today. I love you. Bless you. That's been my time with you. Amen.